Hello, I'm Isaac Mand, and today I'm here to talk about an awe-inspiring solution to the depletion of Earth's natural resources, asteroid mining. It is predicted the Earth will be depleted of all accessible resources by around 2050. What is also predicted is that Earth will have hit the 9 billion mark for humans living on it by this time. Earth cannot in any way support 9 billion reckless human beings, especially considering its current amount of resources. A company backed by film director James Cameron, as well as Google's very own chief executive, Larry Page, and Google's executive chairman, Eric Schmidt, known as Planetary Resources, plans to solve this resource crisis. They say, and I quote, Planetary Resources' mission is clear. Apply commercial, innovative techniques to explore space. We will develop low-cost robotic spacecraft to explore the thousands of resource-rich asteroids within our reach. We will learn everything we can about them, then develop the most efficient capabilities to deliver these resources directly to both space-based and terrestrial customers. Asteroid mining may sound just like fiction, but it's just science. Some questions you might have right now are, how are we going to mine these asteroids? What can we potentially gain from these asteroids? Basically you're asking, how does this affect us, and why does it matter to me? Well, to start things off, Planetary Resources has already proposed a solid three methods as to how they would mine the space rock. But first, how did they decide which, a which asteroids to prospect for mining potential? Well, low-cost commercial robotic spacecraft will explore asteroids and determine their position, composition, and accessibility of resources. My guess is that they would deploy the drones to near-Earth asteroids because they currently seem to have the most potential for mining. A near-Earth asteroid as if you couldn't guess already, is an asteroid that is close to Earth. The majority of asteroids in our solar system are in the Kuiper Belt and the Oort Cloud, but more than occasionally, one breaks orbit and strays close to Earth. Back to drones now. The, the technology into how these drones would prospect is still up for debate. Technology like this is currently available for mining on Earth, but needs to be greatly tweaked, factoring in all the differences between the environment of Earth and space. Stripping the asteroids of resources is an even larger, more complicated jump in technology. The first method proposed by Planetary Resources is called Moving Day. In short, the selected near-Earth asteroid is moved into Earth's orbit by a small solar-powered low-thrust rocket for easy extraction. Two immediate problems with this method are one, being malfunction sending the asteroid into Earth even though it's a low thrust rocket, and two, having to program the rockets to bring the asteroid into Earth's orbit, and then having them change their position or propulsion to stop the asteroid from rotating, and even possibly stopping it from orbiting, to allow extraction. I say possibly, because at this point, no one can really justify technology, or what technology, will be used at the early stages of space mining, and whether it can be used while the asteroid is orbiting, or if the asteroid needs to, be at a, needs to be at a complete standstill. The second proposed method is called small haul. To me, this is the most intriguing method in which they say they will enclose an asteroid in some sort of container and move it so it can, be, so it can orbit the moon. The asteroid would have to be fairly small, ranging most likely up to 7 meters in diameter, for one of two reasons. To be able to transport it and its mass in relation to the moon, for it to be able to orbit the moon. This also brings up another question. Would it be profitable to use this method considering how much it would cost to, to retrieve one small asteroid in relation to the price of the raw materials taken from the asteroid? The current answer to that would, be, would shockingly be no. Even though one relatively small metallic asteroid with a diameter of merely 1.6 kilometers contains more than 20 trillion dollars US with the precious ores and metals. The cost imposed with the early stages of this method would far outweigh the current market price of these metals and ore. And once again, the problem arises of having a technological malfunction and sending the small asteroid into Earth. Alright, so now the last method 
planetary resources proposed they will use is called on-site. This method sounds fairly self-explanatory, but I'll sum it up for you quickly. Some sort of robotic mechanism will be placed on-site at the asteroid and would drill and strip out material. It would then place this material in a capsule, sending the materials back to Earth. This method seems very reliable, posting few small issues. Although they have been fairly vague explaining this method, not a lot can be pinned on it because it involves a very high knowledge of space, engineering, space engineering, the environment of space, and lots m and many more criteria only some professionals have very vast knowledge on. Even with the proposed methods of planetary resources, no one really knows what the first actual asteroid mine will look like. Even with limited knowledge about the topic, some good assumptions can be made. I have put together a total of eight. These assumptions are not fact, but I think they're a fair shout. Feel free to disagree. My first assumption, asteroids would be the main source of fuel because of all the ice they contain that can be broken down into hydrogen and oxygen, which are the two main components in rocket engine propellant. Second, as solar technology increases, most likely the machinery that will be used will be solar powered to reduce the need for spacecraft to haul fuel to and from asteroids. Third, the equipment would obviously have to be lightweight so for allow easy access to and from asteroids with minimal cost. Fourth, more robots and machinery than man because of the danger level of a first mine and the amount of food usage. Robots are not as high maintenance as humans. Fifth, the methods will likely be the ones used on Earth and the ones previously mentioned. A canopy would have to be used to prevent the ore from just floating away. Sixth, asteroids have nearly no gravity, so the mining equipment and the astronaut miners who operate it will have to use grapples or some other form of stabilizing equipment to anchor themselves to the surface of the asteroid. However, the lack of gravity is an advantage in moving mined material around without having to use much energy and power. Seven. Once a load of material is ready to be sent to either Earth or a space colony, rocket fuel for a spacecraft would, could be produced by breaking down the water from the asteroid or asteroids nearby into hydrogen and oxygen. As mentioned above, this makes it very fish convenient and efficient. And my last assumption, because of the lack of gravity and atmosphere, ferrying the newly mined materials to the moon would be easy. Once there, they can be refined and formed into structures, if we're talking moon colonization. The two, only two things that are, are really holding us back from astronaut mine, asteroid mining currently is just the lack of technology and economic factors. Currently, the economics outweigh the benefits, but in 50 years or so, who knows? Earth could go through a somewhat resource recovery phase. We can mine precious metals, which can be used for building, like platinum, nickel, iron, gold, titanium, and we can even mine fresh water from the asteroids. The largest comet in our asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, Ceres, contains approximately 200 million cubic kilometers of water, almost five times the amount of fresh water Earth currently has. And that's only one asteroid of the millions. If we can refuel space vessels while in the midst of travel, Take a moment to imagine how much further we could how much further we could further space exploration and space commercialization. With these space gas stations, it would allow for vessels to cheaply and efficiently refuel. If we're thinking of colonizing other celestial bodies, considering our moon to be the first, there's no Home Depot on the moon, and using rocket ships as a truck to deliver supplies is extremely expensive and inefficient. It's like using a FedEx truck to deliver all the supplies needed to a construction site, but in a smaller size scale compared to colonizing on the moon. Asteroids could be that Home Depot. Near-Earth asteroids contain trillions of dollars in minerals. Although terraforming is another story, with all the essential asteroids, uh, sorry, all the essential, essential materials asteroids have to offer, humans as a race have the opportunity to take a huge leap forward into colonizing on other celestial bodies. In conclusion, asteroids have the potential to give humanity many of the substances and much of the energy sources needed to settle 
in the inner solar systems. If we ever wish to settle in space, asteroids contain many things like hydrogen, carbon dioxide, structural metals, radiation shielding, oxygen, and water that are necessary for our survival. The only reason why space travel is so expensive currently is because every pound of water, fuel, air, supply, air supplies we take into space needs to be brought off the gravity well we now know as Earth. I'll leave you with this. Do you think Earth as a planet will survive without us humans finding other sources of precious natural resources our Earth is increasingly depleting of? I don't. Thank you, everybody.